So when they receive the work, they're very happy with it. Mm -hmm. They keep on calling me back with the feedback that the work is amazing, like compared to the other folks. I'm not sure what the other folks are doing, but the but opening and knocking that door <laughs> is is what's kind of difficult now. Okay. I think they are not ready to open the door for me. Uh, just because as soon as they look at the pricing, they go like, you know what? This this guy is charging. Where is the pricing? Give me one second. This guy is charging an arm and a leg for the for the work. We we can't afford him, right? So mm -hmm. there was this guy who looked at this and he said, 175, that's too much. So have you done any like background checking on the specific agents that are telling you that it's too expensive? So I, okay, so two two things, John. One thing is that I'm I'm trying to grow, but mm -hmm. I'm trying my best to like cold call and all of those things. So that's another topic, yep. right? Right now, I think it's been two shoots. One shoot I'm, one shoot I'm booked for in, in March 1st. The two that I did absolutely loved it, but they could afford me because they were sort of big name clients. Yeah. Right? So they didn't, didn't really bother me about the pricing. They were, and even in terms of when I said, hey, you know, can you spread the word around that I'm a new photographer and, and growing this a brand that I'm trying to grow? Mm -hmm. They mentioned, yeah, but we also need to make sure that these prices, we need to only forward the name to people that do not give you a tough time on the prices. Yeah. So even I think they knew that they are kind of the kind of overpriced. But when I look at you, when I look at the other competitor, I I don't think these are too much. So where you'll run into this specific, the reason why I asked about the background check is because there's there's two different types of realtors. There's the ones like you said that are like the high performers, the people that do a lot of business. This is what they do. This is their full time gig. They do two listings a month or more, whatever. And then there's the people that do one or two listings every six months or maybe even every year as just extra income. Like they either like they're retired or they have a day job or whatever they do. Those are going to be the people that will nickel, dime, nickel and dime you on price. And it's fine to work with them. And like if you just want to go after volume and, and focus on getting as much material as you possibly can, then it's I guess it would be OK to like low, maybe lower your pricing for these people, like be like, OK, well, I'll knock 30 bucks off the price or whatever. But with the expectation that you're not going to do that long term, that you're going to focus more because the the high performers, the people that won't bat an eye at your pricing are the people that you want to be working with. And there are a ton of them. The low performers are easier to get a hold of. But then, of course, they'll give you the same thing like, oh, this is this, is, this costs too much. One seventy five for photos. I bet you if you took a like if you cross reference the people that told you you're too expensive and then looked at their past listings that they've done, you'd see the quality that they're used to, which would be like either cell phone pictures or whatever. If you're desperate for the money, desperate for the notoriety, desperate for like just trying to get your name out there, I guess you could lower the price a little bit. Um, very short term or maybe maybe you could do like kind of do a mixture of like the free shoot thing where it's like okay well my normal pricing is 175 i'll do it for 125 or 100 this time just to prove to you how high quality i am and then if you like the result then you can come back and pay full price that might be a, a better icebreaker um that's why i recommend people you know do the free shoots be like oh i know that i'm good at what i do i know that it's high quality so you know, I'll do the first one for free. And then, you know, by that time, I'll have proved to you that not only am I I'm good at what I do, but the experience that you'll have when you work with me is just as good because that's going to be your main differentiator because it's all well and good to sell a marketing package for $50, you know, which is very close to your cost. But the only thing that differentiates me is I'm my personality. I try and be more fun to work with. I try and be more lenient. I try and provide better value. All what I focus on is customer service because I'm a little bit more expensive than everybody else. And I'm a little bit slower, probably. Maybe I don't win as many listings for that reason. But like, I don't know if you saw the video that I just uploaded today of the $1,600 package. The guy's thrilled with everything. He's like, oh, this is fantastic. You were so easy to work with. And he's calling me next week. For another one. So there's another sixteen hundred dollars. So those are the types of clients that you want to get after. That's why I, I recommend. And I think we talked about this before is to just remove all your individual pricing from everything. Like instead of sharing this a la carte service list, just come up with your packages, have the four columns be like, this is what you get for this package. This is what you get for this package. This is what you get for this package. And these are the prices. And then People will choose based off of what you give them, what's in front of them. And then if they don't and if they're like, well, do you just do photos and you're like, yeah, I do it for one seventy five. That actually is pretty good psychology, because if you hit them with the more expensive 
bundles first, you're actually price anchoring them. So if you give them a $400 bundle, a $700 bundle, an $800 bundle, and a $1,200 bundle, and then you hit them with like $200 for photos, they're going to be like, oh, okay, that's a lot better. And so they'll pay it immediately. Whereas if you, if they're just, com- if they're comparing you to the other photographers that they've been working with, which are like 130, yeah, 130, 120, but their but their work is not as good at all. So so the the way I got into with these couple of photographers is that somebody I knew does a lot of um, staging mm-hmm. for these real estate agents. So she put in a good word. She saw my work. She was like, "This is amazing." She put in a good work, a good word, and then they started hopping on this bus. Hey, you know what? We'll contact him and we'll do it. So so they <clears throat> so they like the work, but I've seen what they were doing before, and it was literally they were through. So first of all, it was a mess of flambient. Mm-hmm. I think their previous photographers were using flambient. And they didn't know how to use Flambian. I run into that all the time. <laughs> not, only, not only that, but the but the but the pictures are like two thousand and eight like DVD YouTube videos, you know, like oh, God, yeah. two thousand eight, yeah. two thousand seven. So <laughs> those kind of pictures. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so that's that. The second feedback that I've gotten during my first one, the second one, the agent, agent was that, that I'm taking time. Now, I read the book right before the shoot. Mm-hmm. And I think you mentioned that initially it, you'll take some time, but then it, you'll come down to like 40 minutes, 45 minutes, even I think you're in and out for 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. So how do I, I don't want to be, I don't want to, I don't want to say that, hey, you know what, this is early days and I, I'm taking the reason why I'm taking two hours is because I'm trying to cover my ass and all the shots and so that I don't miss anything. Right. And eventually I go back and choose. But I, so how do I how do I convey this message to them? So you have a couple of options if the so I always tell everybody because if they're like, oh, I'll meet you there, I'll be hanging out with you. I always tell them I say 99 percent of my shoots. I'm there alone at the house. I prefer it that way. I don't want anybody there. If they insist on being there with you, then you can just say, Hey, I'm going to take a little bit of time. I just want to make sure this listing is is bang on. If you want me to hurry up, I'll hurry up. But if I miss anything, I'm going to charge you a return fee to come back. So then that kind of gets them to be like, oh, okay, he's just making sure that he's I mean, uh, uh, there's there's ways that you can speed up really quickly. Again, it's going to come down to experience, but then it's also going to come down to like if you if you look at the house that you just did and you look at all the shots that they ended up liking then you i i just i so if did you watch the whole i would recommend watching the whole like the whole photography part of that video that i did because it just like i literally i place the tripod i take the photo i place the tripod i take the photo i place the tripod i just move boom 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 it's way quicker to do that than to like think about what shots you're getting like default to all four corners And then in front of things like I went in front of the couch and then behind the couch and I just did everything. So if you shoot every single angle that you possibly can, that takes all the guesswork out of it. And you can just get it done because you can. Yeah, because I used to take a whole lot longer as well until I was because I was thinking about every shot. Like, does this look good? Does this look nice? It It was it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth doing because inevitably, even if I was taking my time and being like, yes, these are the shots that I'm happy with. The realtor would hit me back like, well, did you take a picture of the fireplace at this angle? No. Now I do. Now I just take every single photo that could be out there and deliver everything. Am I slightly less profitable because I get like now I know after a couple like a couple thousand listings, it's like, okay, generally speaking, this realtor is going to want this angle this realtor is going to want this angle, blah, 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 blah. But when you're working with someone new, you just take everything and deliver everything. You might your interiors editing cost might be slightly higher, but that's OK, because, you know, it saves the potential for them to be mad that you missed something. And then yeah. either you have to eat like, let's say it was a 30 like the shoot was 30 minutes away. You have to go back. Are you going to have them pay a return fee? Are you like it just it adds all these complexities. So if you just place the tripod, quickly check your verticals and just take the picture in every single just do it that way for a little bit. And you'll get you'll you'll get you'll get familiar with like what you what agents end up using. So I don't think I'm I'm checking all the pictures, but what I'm checking every time is the, is the levels. So every time I take a picture, I first open the leveler in the camera, I level my tripod, then I take the picture. Then I go to the next one. If the level is a bit out, I level it again, then I take the picture. You don't leave I your level on? Up. No, because I'm looking at the shot. Do you use your viewfinder or do you use the monitor? Uh, the monitor. Okay. Yeah. I just so. Does it not have a display cycle through where you can see the photo and then you can also see the? So normally with cameras, you can cycle through on the display and then you'll be able to see the photo and it just has an overlay 
with the leveler on it. Exactly, that's what it is. But I remove the overlay to look at the to look at the look at the shot that I'm taking. And I would I, I would do I would try and get I would try and get used to just being able to see the shot just with the the overlay on it. Anyways, just oh, it's, it'll speed up your workflow like crazy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like even so on my Canon 5D Mark III. Well, here I can just show you beast of a fucking camera. Um, so this is a DSLR. So normal, like it normally doesn't have the live view. And you have to look through that, but you can do live view by clicking this, and then it shows you what's in there. And then that's what the the overlay looks like. You see the level in there. Yeah. I, I wish I could show you mine, but mine is huge. Yeah, I, I had the Lumix. Uh, it's you have the GH5, right? No, I have the um, the RP and an RP. Oh yeah, I, so I have the R7, so it's very similar. Um, um, and if you really, if you really can't do it, uh, there's I, I wish I can't remember where I put mine. They make these two dollar. Uh, I got those. I got those, but they are not in sync with the camera's leveler. Uh, the camera's level is just an estimate. The that's rule of like, thumb, basically, crazy. with the with, with the in camera level, if everything's green, that means it's close enough to fix in post. It's not going to be 100 percent accurate. Like in my five in actually in every camera that I've had, like it can be all completely green, but I can see that the verticals are completely off. So, you know, I see. But the but the hot shoes is good. I think the one that you're talking about goes in the slot of hot shoes. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but I, I use those ones and they were completely off. They were not. Uh, bummer. Yeah, thing. OK. Yeah, just try and get used to it then. I mean, as you uh, honestly, I don't even need the level anymore. It's I have it on just because it's like whatever, because um, it's nice to be just super quick. But like just looking at the, the monitor, I know where to look. I know like if this wall, if it goes like that at all, then that the verticals off and I have to like that just comes with experience. So as you as you get inside listings, you'll get faster and faster. I promise. OK, awesome. So that's reassuring. Yeah, but I'll try it with the with the leveler on. Uh, the second thing is, yeah, so two things. So previously on the same topic, we were talking about the Osmo 6 versus mm -hmm. the DJI RS Mini 3. Yeah. And the, and the Z-axis. Uh, that's right, the, the, the shaking. Mm -hmm. The shaking. So what I did is I tried putting up, let me show it to you. I tried putting up um, like a camera, um, like a phone holder on top of RS3 Mini, uh -huh. right? I know this is an overkill, but the, the difference is huge. Good, good. If, yeah, if that is so, it, it, did you have to add extra weight or did you find that it like, did you just turn down the, the motor settings? Because sometimes so if, the, I, if, if the phone is too light and the motors are too, are like too, like okay, they're set yeah. for a heavy thing. I mean, if it worked, if that works for you, then that works for you. Killer. Yeah, so there's, so, so that's what I wanted to ask. I think that's where you've answered my question. So the shots are not as jittery, mm -hmm. right? But I think the motors are not responding that well. And that was my question to you. OK, add weight so with my add weight, add weight oh. to the. So um, they make uh, like iPhone cages and then um, they also make these. So you can either do something like this okay. so you can get a cage for the phone. This is a newer 200. This weighs 200 grams. So you can add one to both sides or you can they make them. Um, I think they make 500 grams one and they're not too expensive. They're like five bucks for this thing. Or you can get it like it on a clamp like this. And where do I put this clamp on this? No. So you, you'd you get a cage for your phone specifically. Oh, I see. The phone goes into the cage. Mm -hmm. Then I'll your cage for the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, so that's the that. Um, well, before before you do that, why don't you describe to me what what's actually physically happening with the gimbal? Like when you say it doesn't respond, what what is it doing? So let's say if I'm if, if this is a gimbal. Right. And if I'm facing this way, this is the front for now. I think the the the, the axis are locked right now. Mm -hmm. But let's say if this is the front and I turn to the right, the camera is going to probably going to first go a little bit to the left and then it will turn to the right. I am trying to remember this. So the specific. reason why I say this sure. is this is not happening with the with the camera. Like if I put my RP and a lens on it, and initially I was trying that, and then you suggested that let's go with the iPhone approach. Mm -hmm. and I really like that approach because it's of course it's so much quicker, right? But but the response of the gimbal is not the same as the as the camera, and that's where I think the weight thing might be applicable. Are you? But yeah, if if it's if it works with a normal camera and lens, and then as soon as you slap your iPhone on it, it doesn't respond. Then it's the motors are too strong for the weight that's on it, and you just need to add weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll try with that. I'm on the fence about balancing too because the 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 axes are extreme right now. So I'm at the very end of all couple of axes. Mm -hmm. Right. I have no more place to go for balancing. 
So it might be that too. So maybe adding the weight will bring it down closer to the midpoint. So here, here's a couple things you can do with that. So you can either get those little, these little screw on things or yeah. you can get um, it's called a cheese plate. It goes between what you mount, like it goes between your camera and the gimbal and it shifts. I had to do this. So like the Blackmagic Pocket 4K, for instance, was a really oblong, weird thing. Like it wasn't like a nice camera. It's like wider um, and it was too wide for the gimbal. So I had to get a cheese plate that has it has it's just filled with quarter quarter inch um, threads. And then that allows you to move the mount any which way that you need to. Yeah, look up cheese plate. It, it, you'll see it's just I think it's like 50 quarter <laughs> quarter uh, inch threads. Yeah, something, something like, like that. This? Something like that. Just mm -hmm. I would I would look at one specifically like uh, do uh, RS3 um, gimbal RS3 mini gimbal cheese plate. And there someone will have found one that works the best with it. Okay. So you'll need a cheese yeah. plate to be able to maneuver because the iPhone's similar. So, I mean, because the iPhone's wide then it's going to be kind of wonky anyway, so you'll have to move it and then you'll need to get counterweights. It's going to take some finagling, but I mean, it's still going to be an infinitely better result than because like the Canon RP is good, but your iPhone's going to have better video. RP cannot compete with like, for example, iPhone or even the S2s and S1s, yeah. Sony A7s, oh sorry, A7, uh, even uh, A7 III, yeah. 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 yeah, they it can. Yeah, I mean it's a base, it's a base level full frame camera. It's like they they took it goes like RP, R8, and then R6 yep. and R5. <laughs> that's 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 the, that's the progression. Yeah, the only thing is because of those five bracketed shots, I think the HDR thing. That's why it it looks so like vivid and nice. The pictures, mm -hmm. but other than that, it it's a camera which is only good for pictures. I yep. wouldn't say it's good for video. Totally. Right? Um, and I think right now I'm not not at that level that I can have another camera for videos itself because right now I'm just trying to build a brand. I mean, that's what I but so it, I thought that I did, too, because that's why I was using a Canon M50 for photos, which is like a really it's just, it's a three hundred and fifty dollar camera. And then I was using a three hundred dollar lens and then I was using the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. I was like, I can just use my camera and my phone for videos. And then I tried it out and I was like, this is way better. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Super. Um, the second thing is the bathrooms. If I go by Nathan Cool, mm -hmm. I don't think <laughs> I can ever capture a shot because that guy goes into like so much like, you know, and everything has to be uh, like everything is fixed. You know, if you don't make the shot, you'll probably, you know, burn in a pit full of like pus and hell <laughs> because that's how he write, write his books, right? So he's very adamant on like making the right shot, but sometimes you have to be quick enough, right? Yeah. So if I, if I look at, for example, this bathroom, now mm -hmm. he, in his book initially, when I started reading this one year ago, he said, never tilt the camera down. Yeah. But then how would you capture bathrooms? Uh, you just have to, what, 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 uh, what focal length is your kit, is your lens? 14 to whatever. 14 will be good five. enough then. Just back it up out of the door frame. You can have door frame in your shot. I can have door frames in my shot. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, I didn't think about that. I thought that's going to look absurd. No, nah, camera just put, push the camera back out. Because honestly, what you could do. So if you if the camera's further back out and let's say the left side, you can see a little bit of the door frame, but that lets yeah. you have a wider field of view inside. Then you can just crop the picture so you can't see the door frame anymore. That's what I've been doing. And it's perfectly fine. You figured oh, out the stairs. Uh, yeah, I did actually. Good, yeah, good. Right. So it was so... Oh my God, Jordan, you wouldn't even believe it. I had to shoot the next day uh -huh. and I was, and I was, I was constantly thinking about you. I had to shoot the next, uh, the next day I went to my, um, it's my sister's place. All you see in mm -hmm. the, in the pictures, the sample pictures, so her sisters, were, uh, her stairs were pretty crazy. So I started like practicing at one in the morning and I was so tired. I was like, okay, I'm done. It worked out. I was going home. I dropped the camera out of my hand. I was so tired. And my, <laughs> and the, 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 um, the X3 instead of 360 X3, it cracked on the on the front. Oh. So even if you look here, like the client didn't catch it. But if, even if you look here, for example, I can show you the crack itself. Yeah, it's, I see it's it. Right I here. see yeah. it. Yeah. So the guy didn't catch it. But yeah, but you can see the crack. Anyway, I sent it out for repair and I got an alternate from Amazon. But anyway, nice. that's what happened. So this is the bathroom that you see in the pictures. Okay. This is the door frame. If I go out of the door frame, it's going to be, for example, it's, I feel it's it's too weird. Let me show you the bathroom one more time. It's fun. Right here. Mm -hmm. So some so some bathrooms works. are just going to be too small. So you get the picture that you can. This, though, if I moved the camera, like if I brought the camera back a little bit and then tilted it to the left, so I, I put emphasis on seeing the entire sink, I bet you I would just see very minimal door frame right there, door jam. And then you don't show this. If you do the frame... Then no, you, you can see it in the mirror. So as long oh. as you can see a little bit of the toilet, 
And then like I always prioritize vanity, but then like oh, usually there's going to be a mirror and it's going to show the shower. And if the bathroom's big enough, then yeah, you'll be able to take a photo of the vanity and a photo of the shower. But if it's a small yeah, bathroom like it, this, that's what I did in this bathroom. Uh, there's another bathroom that I think we can run right here. This is such a bad shot for me, but I I took two pictures. I think I think I, I took one. Yeah, one of the vanity, mm -hmm. and then I load the camera down, and then I took one for this this toilet and the shower. How would you do that? I. I bet you anything you could see enough of the shower in the mirror if you just did the door jam again. That's what I that's that's what usually. So, yeah, I see that right there. So I, I would have it. So the left side, like the little pin or the the, the, the door okay. pin holder right there, yeah. I would have that in the picture. And then I would have the tripod high enough to where you can see in the mirror to the shower. If it's big enough and like it's a nice shower, then I'll go into that right corner. And then I'll just leave the vanity out of it completely. And I'll just take a picture of the toilet and the, the shower. But, but then there's a possibility that you won't see the toilet, which is fine. That's fine. Everybody, everybody knows it's going to have a toilet in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's so that's kind of the, the like, it's, it's so funny to, to see all of this through the eyes of somebody who's newer, because I remember going through all this same stuff. And then when I finally realized, like, oh, yeah, of course, a bathroom is going to have a toilet, because sometimes You'll you'll go to a house that's it's typically I don't know what it is, but typically it's in like an 80 year old woman's house and the toilet will be when the door is open, the toilet is completely hidden. And then those I don't even I don't even take a picture with the toilet in it. I just take a picture of the vanity in the shower. That's it. <laughs> I'm like, whatever. They'll find the toilet when they come in there. These pictures are good, man. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. So that was so 28. Yep. I want to see it. So you did that. So even. So I would have tilted oh, the camera. I, I, I so I would I would have had like I saw the one 27 go to 27. So that this one, instead of having the door in the frame, I would have tilted the camera all the way to the left. Uh, it's fine if you see the door handle a little bit. Don't even worry about it but because there's no shower. There's nothing interesting on on the door. So it's just all vanity. All vanity is going to be the way to go. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Even, even, if, you, even if you're not able to capture all this. No, I would. So you'd be able to see that. So like I would have it to where like move your mouse a little bit to the right of that painting. That's that's where the end of my frame would be. So you'd see the door. You'd see the doorknob that a little bit. Really yeah, that means you're really out. Mm -hmm. But well, for, 14 you... should be super wide. Like so I used a 14 to 24 for the longest time and it was wide enough for anything I threw at it. I use a 12 now, a 12 to 24. And that's like really wide enough to see anything. But like, honestly, if it's a tiny bathroom, don't even try and capture all of it in its essence. Just show the vanity. If you see a little bit of the toilet, that's fine. That people are going to know that it's a bathroom. And then what about the floors? If the floors are like, you don't want to show the, the rugs or, the, <laughs> if the, you know, the staging person comes in and puts these like, some, you know, fancy rugs on the floor and all of those things. How would you how would you show that? And that was one of the reasons why I was tilting it down, because I, I thought like I need to show the I need to show this. No. So staging is better for like, so let's look at a living room where it's like they, they brought the furniture, you know, they've got some accent pieces or whatever. My priority isn't the stage itself. It's just the house because the staging is going to like people like honestly, right, right here. I wouldn't show this rug because what if the and this is actually when uh, the, the third home I ever shot a realtor, I took a shot like this where I was like trying to show everything. Or no, it was a video that I did. I did the video and she wanted me to recapture some things and splice out some stuff because she told me that I was focusing too much on the staging and not enough on the house. And then ever since then, I was like, oh, oh, fuck the staging. Let's focus on the house. Because if you focus too much on the staging, a potential buyer won't be able to customize the house in their head if they're looking at all like some staging is fine. Like there's a couch, there's this, there's that. But like they probably shouldn't put paintings up, maybe some wall decorations, but not paintings, not pictures, no nothing, because you're just trying to get enough to help whoever's viewing it be like, oh, OK, that's what I like. I, I'm, I'm imagining my own stuff in it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe next time I'll try just just run through that. the whole just run through everything. OK. Awesome. It was one of the bathrooms. This I took only one shot because that's and I think that's what you're suggesting. Keep that's keep fine. The that box. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I wouldn't bat, like maybe I'd move a little bit closer so I can't see the light switch. But that would be like the only yeah. thing that I. that's fine. 
Awesome. Also, uh, as you progress, you'll start yeah, you'll start um, taking yeah. less and less interiors. I get it though. I get ooh. Show me thirty three. Yeah, it's just a it's just a small. I like it. I like that. It's cool shot. Yeah. Yeah. So as you progress, you'll start taking less and less interiors just because you'll know like ah oh, this one I don't need to do this one I don't need to do that because I used to do um for every single bedroom I would take at least two shots sometimes three. But now, if it's not the primary suite and it's just a smaller bedroom, I just take a single shot from the door in. Wow. And I've never had a complaint. Wow. Nice. Never had a complaint since Very I nice. started doing that. And that saved me an extra two shots per room, pretty much. So that's been that's been amazing. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, John, another thing. How do you... So this is one of the shots, right? I'm, I'm on the other end of the, of the living. But you see how... So uh, again, everybody... Like the the clients like the shot, but I didn't like how the shape of the TV comes into this in into these shots. Like it's very oblongated, mm -hmm. it's very long. You know, mm -hmm. um, the way, these clients were a disaster to work with. Man, the state agent was there for about five minutes and then he left. And then the family kept on holding me after every five minutes. Hey, did you do that room? Did you do that room? Did you do that room? I, and yeah. then there was a I think the 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 children downstairs. They were in the basement. They kept on talking to their parents. You know, these these guys charge so much. You could have done the photography yourself. He's taking so long. You know. Like what is this mess? I anyway. I, ch I tell the realtor. So in my pre shoot checklist, uh, if you use it for yourself, you'll notice that um, I have a fee that I charge for when that happens. Like if kid, oh, that, wow. that's why in my pre shoot checklist, I'm like the home is empty of homeowners, kids, pets, everything, cars out of the driveway. If anybody is in that house making me take longer, they're getting charged an extra fee. And that I've noticed that was a, that's been enough to, uh, and you have to charge the fee. Or you at least have to tell the realtor, hey, this is what happened. I won't charge you this time, but this can't happen again. Uh, yeah. So, Jordan, how would you cover this bathroom? Same thing. That's good enough. I'm guessing the toilet was directly opposed to the. Um, yeah. This is the just I take a picture of the problem. vanity. I run into the. There's this one uh, housing development in my city. It's a particular floor plan that I've shot seven times now. The same exact house. Just it's like on the same street too. attached to the living room and adjacent from the garage. There's a hallway with the laundry room at the end. And then there's a bathroom and it's like a it's a nine foot long bathroom, but only like th two and a half feet wide. And it's the vanity and then the, the toilet on the other side. I just shoot the vanity. I don't even shoot the toilet. Who cares if somebody looks at it and there's like, where's the toilet? They can find out when they go to the house. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. And the same topic again. Yeah, I took the shot. Look at the TV. That's just going to happen from it being a wide angle camera and it being towards the end. Because if you shot a TV straight on, then it would be normal. But because it's it's towards the end, like the couch is oblong, the the chairs in front, like the ottomans in front are a little bit stretched. That's just going to be the way it goes. If you backed up as much as you could a little bit more so you can see the edge of the TV, that helps it not kind of stretch so much. And then I also always I mat out the TVs in Photoshop. Well, actually, Photobert does it for me, but I used to have to do it manually. So I would go in Photoshop once I got the pictures back and then I would do um, the polygonal selection tool and I'd go uh, just so there's like the, the the border of the TV and there's the screen itself. I'll select the corner just underneath the bezel all the way on four and then select the brush and then set it to um, all the way black and then brush over it and then I'd set it to white. And then I'd set the flow to like 5% and the opacity to like 50%. And then I just like gently brush over it like once or twice. And then that helps it look like the TV's off and there's no reflections. That's okay. that's what I started doing um, pretty early on because I, I, I hated I would see myself in reflections on monitors and stuff. And that always bothered me. So I was like, oh, I got to get rid of that. But then Photober, when I started working with them, they do it by themselves. So I don't even have to do it anymore. That's what I'm thinking. So I'll just add it to my I'll have a checklist with them. I'll with my editor, I'll just tell them, you know, just remove the reflections from the TV. Yep. You know? Cool. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. The last thing that before I let you go, I wanted to tell you, um, you 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 talked about adding weights to the to the RS Mini 3. And while you were speaking, I remember this video. So RS3 Mini. Yeah, this guy. So this yeah. guy hasn't added any weights. And I tried following him, right? So mm -hmm. this is working absolutely fine. I'm just doing the same exact thing. Where I've uh, I've not exactly uh, bought the same on camp, mm -hmm. but the idea is the same, and his is working apparently fine. Check the motors. Check the motor strength specifically, because um, I know I I I'd, I mean you have to be able to change it. I mean the, the like the Xiaoyun Weibo S 
it's literally like you go into the settings and then you just crank the knob or turn the knob down and you can control the intensity of it. Yeah, you can, you can, you can. But I was trying, I think what I was doing is I was increasing it because I thought the motors have to be stronger because the iPhone weaker. Is, I think my, my weaker. I would start set, set the motors to all the way weakness and then try again before at, before buying a bunch of stuff. Cause if he got it to work just with that, then it should be fine. Yeah. So motors, motors weak. Cause if you think of yeah. it, the motors have to be strong in order to capture like to use like a, a, a one pound lens on a two pound body versus a, you know, a one pound, a half a pound phone, the motors wouldn't need to be working as hard. So if you have them set to working to expect three pounds, but you're giving it half a pound, then you can turn, you can turn down that. Yeah. So I'd check that out first. Yeah, Heck yeah. Yeah. I mean, he got good. I, I might even try my, um, like the DJI Osmo Bowl six is great, but, uh, and like, I've found that just adding warp stabilizer gets me close enough and I don't have to worry about wobble, but the, the footage is pretty shaky. So I might, I might try my, uh, Weeble S again. That might be cool. Yeah. I'm trying this too. Otherwise <laughs> what I'll do is I, I like till the time I get enough capital to get another camera, or whatever for, for videos. I think what I do is I try to avoid shots with, of, with, with a lot of walking. And that's what I was noticing too, in your video too, you were doing a lot of reveals and a lot of like back and forth with the body. Yep. I didn't notice a lot of movements. There were, but then, of course, they were like sped up, you know, so that. Just yeah, like that, walking. that one. Yeah. Walking all the way up to all the front of the entrance. I mean, that's just walking as smooth as you can. But if you look at the raw footage, it's just like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even with the corridor walking, like I noticed, like, of course, it's moving. But then I think you're showing it as if it's a walkthrough. Yeah. It's a complete mix of like the walkthrough and the cinematic video. So it makes sense. Yeah. Yep. And that's just because like if you look at my older videos, which I which I mean shit you can do if you want if you want to have a good laugh at how far i've come i'll send i'll send my worst ones to you and you'll you'll, you'll have a laugh um but yeah it used to and that's a, a thing that i see a lot of newer uh beginner videographers miss like they make that mistake because they think they have to travel 15 feet per shot you know i i'm like like literally like this just in one place yep. <laughs> that's it yeah yeah makes sense yeah that's it jordan love it that's it for the call Love it. Um, good luck on your shoots. Let me know how they go. And uh, I, I want to see the materials when you're done. Are you going to do? Um, yeah, see if you can uh, with like this next shoot that you do. Just go in with the mentality of I'm not going to think too much about each shot. I'm just going to put the camera down, check the levels and take the picture. Yeah. And even if it's like a slightly less good result, you'll have more pictures to choose from um, and then shoot. Even um, when is your shoot? A next shoot. It is. It's in a. It's it's a. It's a first March first. Oh, so uh, the day uh, after you get home from the shoot and you uh, let's hop on a call and let's just go through all the raws together and then I'll help you look at like which one um, like the same the night or the next night or whatever. Let's just go through the photos before you deliver them and just see which one. I'll give you my my feedback on which ones I would delete and not even send to the editor and then go from there. Yeah. Yeah, but it might be too early for you because that's around 5 p.m. for me. Um, I should be fine. I can hop on a call on my phone. You'll just have my you'll ha you'll hear my kids complaining. That's it. <laughs> OK, all right. No problem. All right. Can, yeah, I mean, we can do that, but we can also go through like I'm just trying to make it easy for you. We can also go through the raws again. I can send it to whatever I can to the editor and then we can go through the raws again in the, the next year or something before. Whatever. Before yeah, whatever works. Uh, yeah. Hit me yeah. up. Hit me up. We'll do whatever. I will. I will. Absolutely. The next one is not a big gig. I think the guy's like, he's, he's trying me out. He's just forwarding me at Lee's department. Mm. That's what he's saying. But the other one's dead and they like the work. But I think if I'm confident about my video, I'll be a lot more confident in what I'm doing. I just want to make sure because all of these like luxury homes videos that I see on Instagram, of course, I'm not at that level, but I keep on comparing myself that, hey, my so video's here, not that good. No that's, here, here's my biggest piece of advice for that. I only ever go on Instagram to upload something. And then I immediately get off. I and I because I, I know I would scroll through, I would scroll through, I'd scroll through and I'm I'm good at what I do. I think I'm good at what I do, but it's still I it's it's no comparison to these other to like these crazy people that have huge budgets and they're at a property for six hours at a time. It's just not realistic. Um, so I don't. I like I'll, I'll scroll Instagram on my personal account, but my real estate photography one where I'm like, because then I'll see like a bunch of realtors that are like have listings in my area that they clearly had someone else do. And I'm just like getting depressed. I don't check. I don't check that at all. Okay. Uh, at all. Yeah. yeah. The only thing is like I'll, I'll send DMs to people or I'll upload something. But like scrolling through, 
Ah, that's bad for your mental health. <laughs> yeah, no, I've been I've been watching these like gimbal movements of like professionals, and these guys are like using these like I don't know like they're using these gimbals, and on top of gimbals they're using cages and, and sliders cages, and, and monitors, yeah, you know, and sliders. Yeah, it's too much, and I go like, hey, you know what? I'll never be able to compete with these guys, but and you don't have to. That's the thing is like compete with your be well get to the point where you don't even need to compete with your market. You just have your own uh, provide. So next time somebody okay. asks you like, what makes you different? Don't worry about a marketing package. Like you can send, you can shoot that to them as like a bonus, but just be like, I'm easier to work with. I provide better service. I will make sure you're happy. That's it. Try that out. See how people think about it. Because also if somebody tells you, here's another, the one last thing and I'll let you go. If somebody tells you that you're too expensive, say i'd be happy to forward your information to a couple of photographers even if you don't know anybody anybody this is just saying this i'd be happy to send your information to some cheaper photographers i would say just be aware they won't do as good of a job as i do and you might have to to spend money to get them and then you might have me come back to fix what they did anyways and then you'll have spent double so every time i've yeah. said that they've gone with me just fyi so that that's like a really big like it's not arrogant it's just confidence and you're warning them like, OK, hey, the uh, listing that I did, there was a couple months ago. Now I quoted him. It was just photos and drone photos. I quoted him five hundred fifty dollars. He's like, oh, that's way more expensive. Why are you more expensive than the three other people that um, that I got a quote from? I said, that's just my price. If you want, you can go with them. There's no sweat off my back, but just be aware that I'm really good at what I do. And you might have to come back and use me anyways. And he was like, OK, then. <laughs> I'll use you. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's just a psych- that. some psychological tricks. Got it. All right, John. I wish you a good night. Love and it. I'll talk to you next time. All righty. Hit me up. All right. Dude. Thanks, man. Absolutely. Have a good meal. Bye. Bye.